hearing live stream got it we're live just going to quickly check in that I can find us. And then, and then, and no one then, and then. And, and no one then. <laughs> what, movie, what movie is that from, Chris? Dude, where's your car? Dude, where's your car? Sweet! Dude, where's, that might have been one of the coolest things you've done with Brad and the dude. Dude, sweet. Dude. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, so if I'm going to change this out and check how I can share it as me, and then we'll get this. Are you sharing it? Do you know how to share things, Chris? Yeah, not to share things. We're we're, uh, we're sharing right now, actually. Are you really? Well, you're like one yeah. step ahead of me. We're good work. We're good. We're good. All right, so it's bang on 10.30 my time. Mike Starr, Meridel. Meridel is always one of the very first people that tunes in to watch our uh, Facebook Live. So hello, Meridel. As you know, Meridel has her ups and downs at Knoxville Raceway, Chris. So what do I mean by that when I say she has her ups and downs? Uh, that means that we see her in the elevator every Saturday. <laughs> the second person to comment goes, oh, Cruggy boy. So <laughs> you, you should be able to work out who that is. Was that, yeah, was that Gibby? Oh, wow. <laughs> sorry. You're Tony, I had to, man. I'm sorry. I had you're to. awfully cocky for someone. I'm probably going to, he's going to bring Blake to the booth on Saturday. I'm in the infield probably. <laughs> yeah. So we are talking to the man with the reddest shirts and the tightest neck jewelry in all of sprint car racing. Chris Krug, as uh, Tony Bockhoven calls him, old Craigie boy. Incidentally, you like my new kicks? A little, little too yellow for me. A little, little too yellow, but um, hey, I respect it. You know, I, I got you. Now, so, remember, uh, I, I fronted up last year with the yellow and black kicks to celebrate. Go Hawks! Bock Evans says he's, think, driving, he's driving to Nebraska right now, he says. Um, I think I saw that your one, one of the shoe sizes was uh, 24. The other one was 17. And, uh, you know, Blake will get that reference um, as, you know, that was the Black Friday score on uh, last year. So I'll take that one. So in my discussion and my little preempt here on top of the thing, I said, promise not to talk about Husker football too much. We can do that, if you like, and discuss right. the championships. You did take me to that. It's an incredible stadium. I'll give you that. It's an incredible stadium. And the door, we walked in. It's like, oh, right. There, there's the trophy. You got all emotional. You got down on your knees and wept. And then um, that's pretty well the last time I saw Nebraska actually win anything. Anyway, moving right along. We're not going to talk about uh, Jägermeisters and things like that on game day. Chris, yep. um, you are into your 10th year of announcing yeah. at the Sprint Car Capital of the World. Has it gone quickly? It's gone by so quickly. Um, it's been incredible. Um, I, I was rolling out uh, to opening night um, on Friday night of last week. and um, You were you know, rolling out to opening night four weeks ago. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, four weeks ago. But as we were moving out, we, as our, our fourth attempt at opening yeah. night, Really? Um, we, uh, we, um, I was rolling out there, I, you know, I, I have a two and a half to three hour drive, uh, every Saturday. So some days I just, um, I have no music on, I just drive out and kind of just think about my week and, and you know, what I need to do. And it's kind of a peaceful time to kind of just, um, you know, just to, to think about things. And, and, um, I, I had company with me this time on my way out there, my girlfriend and I she drove out with me and I got to and think now a little it bit is like 10 33. So we are three minutes in before you mentioned the girlfriend. My wow. Bad. Wow. I, the, who won who won that bet? Was it Tony or you? Who had the over under on that? Well, I'm not really sure. <laughs> but anyway, you worked it in the first three minutes. You worked yeah. in. So so we were driving out and I just started thinking, you know, it is it, holy cow, this is 10 years. It's a decade. And um it's it's unbelievable. Um when when you're sitting at home as a kid uh, in Omaha, Nebraska, I'd never been to Knoxville, Iowa. I've always watched national on TV, always wanted to go but I never actually been. Um, and as a kid in junior high, you, you wake up and on Saturday mornings, you, you know, you have your bowl of cereal and you play world of outlaw sprint cars on the PS2. What cereal? You're, what kind of cereal are you? Oh, me. Uh, I am a captain peanut butter crunch all day long. Uh, that's a hundred percent, hundred percent. So I'm that's not sure if you watch, have, have you watched any of um, Ted Lasso at all? i have not, I need to, I've not. It, it's very funny. There's a scene there that you will particularly get where basically uh, he hands his son a scone. 
He goes, now this, you, okay, they call scone. this over here a scone. It's a little bit like a biscuit, but you don't put gravy on it. Yeah. And, uh, we both, that's what we're going yeah. Already, already, Ramey has come up and said, only way to watch this interview is with a runza in your hand. Uh, hey, and, I should have had one. I should have brought one. And then Matty Stills just commented. Around. Now, he, yeah. Matty Stills gets around pretty good around uh, Knoxville Raceway as well. And he's unfortunately come out and said, go big red. I don't know how this <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty soon I'll have Justin Clark on here uh, doing that as right. well. Right. He'll be cheering along too, but. So you were munching uh, through your cereal when you were a little kid, dreaming of, of announcing with Tony Bach yeah. at the Knoxville Right. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'd play, um, I'd play uh, PSU, uh, World of Outlaws on there. It was, it was that game and, and NCAA football uh, was the only reason I had a PS2. I played those two games and that was it. Um, and uh, thankfully with the World of Outlaws, I didn't, have, I didn't have to upgrade every single year. I had I, one game last me forever. And, you know, everyone's always like, man, was it always your dream to, to be at Knoxville? And it's like, you know, you know, I said, don't do this the wrong way, but no, because I never even imagined it. Like, you know, there, there are, the way I always put it in perspective is there are thousands and thousands of dirt tracks and race tracks across the country. Um, there are hundreds, you know, there are thousands of announcers. Only two get to be in the booth at Knoxville. So the, the chances of even having a, an opportunity to, you know, put my name in the ring um, and to to do that, it was just it was unbelievable. And, and I, you know, to, to that point, I never even dreamed of it, uh, that I would actually be there one day. And so um, on the way out there, it's just like, man, it's been 10 years. You look back on it and how fast it went. And I remember my first year, um, how it all just really, you know, as, as a guy who, you know, I'm a man of faith and everything myself, it's just the way that God kind of lined it up was was perfect it was it was amazing um and how it all kind of came to be um my my mom believe it or not was one that that found out about knoxville um for me and I'm, i'll explain that here i was down in the other knoxville knoxville tennessee uh finishing my undergrad and um we were looking for jobs and my mom was helping me look for jobs across the country too she was putting in resumes for me and i was putting in resumes everywhere and she, she called me one day and she's like, you know, a place called Knoxville, Iowa. I was like, yeah, the, the, yeah. Uh, my mom, not being a, she's not a gearhead. She's not a big racing fan. You know, she, she learns through me. I was like, yeah, yeah. Knoxville raceway, Knoxville. She's like, yeah, well, there's a, a job opening there for an overnight on air position. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. You know, I'll call, I'll call football games, whatever you get to call uh, Pleasantville high school football games and basketball games. And she's like, I thought you'd like this job because their radio station does lap by lap coverage every Saturday night of the, of the raceway. And I was like, I got to get there, get me in. I don't care how. And uh, I put a resume in. Um, I got a call about two weeks later uh, from Jim Butler, the uh, general manager of the station. Uh, I drove up from Knoxville, Tennessee to Knoxville, Iowa, um, and uh, interviewed for it. And I got the job to be overnights. And um, my my main thing was I just want to be involved at the racetrack somehow. And um, so I started my first year working with Derek Cardwell uh, in the infield. Uh, Jamie Brotman was upstairs. Um, we had Jed uh, with him as well, too. And I was in the infield. I did my research all, all weekend. Um, as much as I love racing and sprint car racing, I didn't know anything about the Knoxville family. And so I had to learn a lot about the drivers um, and really up to date. But I had a knowledge of racing in general. I knew what things were. And had to report on certain things. So, um, yeah, I did the 305, 360s or, or the backstretch. Derek did the 410s. And, um, yeah, that you know, that on the radio station was different. It was great. It was amazing. My first nationals, it was incredible. I was blown away by it. Um, and, uh, you know, it was it was an incredible experience there. And I thought, well, you know, this is pretty cool. Someday I'll, I'll get to call, um, you know, maybe races on, in the radio station uh, one time. And I got to know Tony pretty well that year, too, Mike Roberts. Me and, me, me and Mike um, uh, became pretty close that year um, because he you know, works the infield as well. Um, I was down there for the radio station. And um, about, uh, I want to say halfway through the season, uh, Blake Anderson was going to step down and move up to North Carolina. And so I was going to go over and talk to Mike the day I heard and said and to ask him, hey, how do I maybe put my name in there for a chance to get upstairs? Because I had, I had just come off of um, working at um, – a uh, track in, in Knoxville. Sorry, Tony. Smoky Mountain Speedway. Um, I was their announcer. That was my very first um, announcing gig that I got to myself. Um, I got to run the show. I wasn't a sidekick. I wasn't anything. It was, it was my my show. It was great. And um, so I had some experience of, of running the things myself, and, and I knew what I was doing. I was confident. And as I went to talk to Mike about this, Mike comes to me and says, what do you feel about getting upstairs next year? It's like, 
yes, <laughs> what do, how do I throw my name in the ring? And um, so time went on. I, I got to know uh, Brian Stickle pretty well. We talked, and then when the season was over with, I interviewed, um, came in. You know, I, I said I submitted a um, uh, a demo to Tony and to uh, Brian Stickle to Mike. Um, Tony talked to me a bit, and um, time went on uh, around November. No, uh, around December that year in 2013. Um, I remember I called Brian back uh, to say, to try and get an update. Like, hey, have you heard from, you know, any minds? And I was living in Pella at the time, and I had an Omaha number. Um, so I called Brian. Brian answered, and I, I say, Brian, it's Chris. I just want to, you know, see how things are going, if you if you heard anything back or that. And he goes, he didn't recognize my number. He goes, well, yeah, I think we're going to go with that kid from the radio station here in town. Um, I, I know you're from Omaha yourself, but I think that kid – the radio station, we're going to go with him. And I thought, that, that, so, oh, that's that's me. Like, oh, is this, this Chris? Like, yeah. It's like, oh, so yeah, I, I have an Omaha number, but I live in, <laughs> in Pella. He's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to go with you, man. You're you're our guy for, for Tony, and um, we're going to go ahead and get you uh, on board here for next year. And that was pretty much how, you know, I, I got that job. It all kind of just fell in line. And um, I, I was excited. I was pumped. And um Nervous too, uh, because I wanted the Knoxville crowd, the Knoxville home area, to you know accept an outsider, um, and just trust me that I, you know I, I deliver a good show um, and, and just have fun with it. And, and hopefully, these past ten years they've, they've done that. Yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say that you're a late model guy. I think you yeah. you love you love sprint cars, but your passion is definitely the Ubers, as Tony uh, refers to them. Even though uh, year before last, you traded in the late model Na- Knoxville Nationals to go watch a football game that you lost anyway. Uh, but um, yeah. you, land models really are your thing. And I know that you, you and I had a really cool experience uh, last year. We went out to Steve Kaziski's place and, uh, oh, man. and, and showed me that super cool old NASCAR that he still keeps in the garage. And yeah. so your, your heritage is with the Kaziski's and you go right, well back into that whole Nebraska culture, but also late models in particular, right? Yeah, I, I grew up on late models in Nebraska. Uh, we called them Grand Nationals uh, at I eighty Speedway, the late I eighty Speedway. I hate saying that, but uh, obviously it was it was uh, taken down and sold here. And my my cousin um, uh, raced. Uh, my cousin Jody raced in the nineties and two thousands at I eighty Speedway uh, in the uh, late model Grand National late model division, which is like a limited late model almost or a crate. Um, and then my my cousin, as he got old enough, uh, Josh, who you know over the years is we're, we're cousins by blood. Um, we're more like brothers, him and I, and, um, he, um, got into, into racing in the late model side as well, um, traveled the, uh, the regional area. Um, and it's just what I grew up on in the area. And I always followed the, the late model side of things on there. Sprint cars. We didn't have many four tens in Nebraska. Um, we had three sixties and three Oh fives. Um, and they were rare, but I, I loved them. I loved the speed of them. I loved them. They were great. My family couldn't stand them, but I'm one of the rare breeds that, that does enjoy that, that late model and, um, and sprint car crossover. I, I thought the show that Atomic did a couple of weeks or just last Thursday, actually, with the four tens and the supers uh, with the, the all stars and Lucas Oil was incredible. I, I wish we can get more like that. Fans deserve those things. And um, yeah, I grew up in that area. Uh, cousin Jody, um, it's kind of how I got my start in racing, actually, way was just through the family. Um, my brother, uh, my brother, excuse me, my uh, uncle and my dad had a car. At the late Playland Speedway in the 70s, the only asphalt track in uh, western uh, Iowa, Council Bluffs. And then when that closed down, they went over to Sunset Race for a while, um, and then now to I-80. Um, and just kind of grew up in it. So my, my cousin's crew uh, working late models in, in Nebraska on the car. I, I don't know anything about cars. I'll tell you right now. I don't know a thing. That's why I'm not a big infield guy. Uh, I like to report on what drivers are doing and what they're saying. But when they say that part right there isn't working, I'm like, which part are you looking at? I don't know what that is. So I, that's why like, I, I don't know cars at all. Um, but uh, I, I did do tires. Um, I, I could do tires. I, I, I siped and I grooved tires and grinded them um, uh, growing up. And then we went, uh, my cousin actually got a ride in ASA and then into ARCA and then the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And uh, I was on his ARCA crew once in a while doing tires over the wall. Um, and then uh, the Nationwide stuff didn't really pan out the way we hoped it would for my cousin uh, on the national stage. Um, we did finish 10th, uh, his rookie season um, in the ARCA Series, runner-up rookie of the year. And I, I cannot, I swear this day, I got to find the standings, but I swear Brian Clawson was the rookie of the year that year in ARCA. And 
Josh was the runner up, I think. Um, I know Brian did some ARCA at that time in 07. Um, I got I can't find any standings for that though, that time, but um, but yeah, and once what ARCA was done, back to dirt, and that's where my cousins kind of finished out his career racing dirt late models. Um, Wade, you've seen the power of 410, but there is something about a late model coming out of a corner doing 130 or 120 with three wheels on the ground, one of them lifted up, twisted and like that. It's a cool look, it's a great feeling, and it really it's a pretty sweet feeling when that happens, uh, especially on short tracks. Uh, when that when that chassis twists like that, it's a pretty cool feeling. That last year, the late model uh, Knoxville Nationals, that feature race uh, with Superman just coming towards the the very yes. end was pretty badass. And it's funny because, um, you know, me doing the infield stuff for you guys, you and Tony on that weekend, I get to meet a lot of the Lucas Oil late model drivers and officials. And uh, it's quite often the drivers after turn the mic off will say to me, hey, I like that accent. And I'm like, well, well, heck. the guy's from Georgia. And he says that to me. I'm like, mate, what, I don't what? What's your reply when they say that, though? Uh, mate, you're the only one here with an accent. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, uh, Jeff Ike is one of my favorite late model racers. Uh, you know, the guy is just like an Iowa, a straight out Iowa legend. And uh, he always calls me the hillbilly. I got to meet this hillbilly. Um, well, what's, you know, what's, uh, how do you introduce him on the mic, though, when you talk to him? Well, I cry like he's Jeff Ike. Jeff Ike, right? <laughs> I love it. You know, um, I don't represent Knoxville Raceway in any way when it comes to scheduling uh, or, or any form at all. And I get myself in huge trouble. But if I could have a fantasy event at Knoxville Raceway, if I could pick with a you know unlimited budget, just whatever, let's just run a show. My fantasy weekend would be a Friday, Saturday or a Saturday, Sunday with USAC, non-wing sprint, sprint cars, 410s and late models, like a, a jamboree. Oh. Let's call it the fantasy jamboree. Oh, like, you're talking my does, language. Does that you're get you a little bit, language. little bit tingly? Yes. Does, that, does that get a little cruggy up and up and about? You're you're gonna you're gonna pay a hefty price for a ticket to get to the cover sanctioning fees there, but I think fans would do it and to see it and be part of it. It'd be amazing. Um, it'd be incredible. Now I'm just getting a message here from Jason Reed. Turn off the live now. <laughs> 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 so um you are a very pas a passionate uh, nebraska man uh mm -hmm. there is a fierce rivalry but there's also a huge crossover uh between nebraska fans and, and iowa fans i don't mean football i mean racing there's a lot of folks uh from uh from nebraska that get out um you know to the races um you and south dakota fans as well and minnesota there's a real like it's almost like the bermuda triangle of sprint car fans people travel around those regions so oh, yeah you know, you're, you're very well accepted, Kruggy. And, and as much as Tony loves giving you some candy on the, you know, on the PA and we, and we all do it, uh, you must feel very proud to be a part of a, the biggest sprint car race and the biggest sprint car track in the world. Oh, absolutely. And proud and, and honored. Um, I, I try and be a very uh, humble person um, because I've always thought about, you know, no matter how bad you have it, somebody somewhere has it worse. And, and so just be thankful what you have. And you know, I feel honored about, you know, what I've been able to, to accomplish and do um, and, and be a part of. And, and when I look back on it, you know, it, you know, in 20, 30 years from now, um, I'll probably cry a little bit like, man, I was part of that. Like I was I was there uh, on staff for that. And, and you, you understand when you see these these um, people you know, down in the bleachers calling races just to you know pretend that they're actually in the booth and do, you're the one that gets to do it. It's like it's it's a it's a big privilege. Um, and, you know, the, the team we have, the staff we have, it's incredible. Um, it, it's been amazing. Um, I'm really excited for Jason Reed and what he's going to do at Knoxville moving forward. Um, he did ask my suggestion and I, I gave him a few like, you know, scheduling things. I said, if you can do one thing, do, do this scheduling wise. Um, and you know, I, I think that there's a couple of things that he's going to do that are going to be phenomenal. And, um, I've always tried to be humble, as I said before, um, you know, just being part of the staff on Knoxville nationals, um, Johnny and Tony called the past couple of years here and I've done some things on the side there, but to know that, you know, uh, I'm still in the booth hanging out and helping those guys out any way I can and when I'm needed. It's phenomenal. Um, you know, this past uh, past two years now, I've started to journal my life a little bit. Um, so I do on a daily basis. Um, the traveling I get to do um, across the country for uh, my race pass um, and for um, for um, you know Knoxville going back and forth and, and the the, uh, the part of the events I'm part of. You know, going down to Volusia for speed weeks and and, and represent the company there, or going out to Reno for uh, the race promoters workshops and things like that. Um, so it's just it's an honor to be part of both sides of the racing industry um, and, and find a full time job. I was very close a couple of years ago, back uh, five years ago, I was very close to 
getting out completely because I, I had to have a, a full-time job. I was getting out of college for my second time. And um, I, I graduated from Nebraska Kearney in 2012 and then went back to school for a second degree in 2015. I graduated again and I needed a full-time job, couldn't find something. And then Jamie got a hold of me and um, essentially said, hey, this guy, Josh Holt, is looking for a guy um, in marketing and sales for racing websites. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in. Let's Let's go talk. I put a resume in and as the process went, I got the job and I got to stay in racing. And I was really thankful for that. Um, so yeah, to, to answer your question, Wade, uh, honored, uh, humbled, uh, proud, and uh, just uh, really grateful to be part of this the past uh, nine years going on 10 now. Yeah, I got to thank you, Chris, for um, for introducing me to the Super Nationals, which um, <laughs> yes, yes. Is, um, the, I mean, you had said to me for years since I first met you back in 2015 around there, uh, you know, super now you got to check out super national. You got to go to yeah. super. National. You got to go to when, Boone. What the hell? When I, when I, when you were asking about super, I told you super national is getting the Boone thing out there and getting the menthol moonshine. And I introduced it to, to J van. I was all excited about it. I was great. And I stopped and I thought, Wade, J van. Oh my God. What did you just do? <laughs> like I knew what we were all in for when it came to uh, the broadcast and super nationals. And sure enough, I, I, it was, it's been great. It's been phenomenal. <laughs> It's a very difficult event to explain to people who've never been there before. Oh. But what I do, what I do love is a proud Iowa man. Now I, I know that's weird to say. I'm an I'm an Aussie, but I, I feel really super connected to the beautiful people of Iowa. Oh, and absolutely. I know I give everyone plenty of crap. I give the Cyclones fans plenty of crap about you know that I'm a I'm a Hawks fan, and and that came about through Brandon Bingham and his family uh, telling me about the wave because uh, they're beautiful mm -hmm. little kids. Um, biscuits and gravy, Bailey and Grayson. They actually sent me a flat Stanley, Chris, which I uh, I'm going to start um, getting out through uh, through Bailey's little school. She sent me a flat Stanley. They called me Wave because they couldn't say Wade properly. And uh, and then and then Brandon said you need to understand more about what Wave means in this state. And then they showed me yeah. the the documentary behind that at Kinnick Stadium and the, and the hospital. Yep. And I said it really and, moved and me. And I'll say too, Wade, I was at Black Friday this year, as big of a Nebraska fan I am, not an Iowa fan. I, I mean, I respect it. I turned around first quarter, waved the kids. Um, it's, it's, it's moments like that where you toss that stuff out the window and, you know, yeah. and you just, hey, you know, we're all together here. These kids, yeah, these kids are are going through a lot right now and just recognize them, let them know, hey, we're here with yeah. you guys, even for five minutes. So it's bigger, uh, it's bigger picture stuff. So, oh, yeah. I think that's what I love the most. And you take all the football rivalry out of it. Chris, is that uh, Iowa has the the biggest sprint car race and the biggest fender race in the world. And, and that's what I what I truly love. And so many people in the first year I was there, they're like, wait, what are you doing? Right. And I'm like, <laughs> it's dirt track, right? It's a it's a circular uh, race track. It's it's dirt. It's got cool, you know, I do love all the catwalks around there. Yeah. And I want to say a bit of a shout out to all the Root family as well, because I know that they're uh they're doing yeah. it really rough right now. So I just want to send my love out yeah. to Brett and everybody. Mate, um, what are you doing this year? Are you are you soaking up every night in the booth? I mean, we've already been robbed of a few with bad weather. Um, <laughs> but are you soaking up every moment up there with Tony and and just going, hey, this, I mean, you, yeah. might, you might not pull the pin at the end. You might get the end of this season and go, oh, I got to go one more time around like Tony has for the last 27 seasons. Um, yeah. Are you soaking up every moment? Every moment of it. Um, and just, uh, just living it up, having fun with it. Um, you know, obviously I'm still working. I'm not, uh, I, like I told John McCoy and Tony last year, I'm not going to, excuse my language, I'm not going to half-ass it this year. Um, I'm still going to give it my all and, and have fun with it. Um, but just relax and, and enjoy it. There are some stressful nights where we're in a rush. I mean, opening night this year, wait, I'm sitting there, they're pushing off for, for the uh, first class to go out for the season. I'm reading off a 305 lineup and they come to the green. I look up and they come to the green and it's a three, it's a three sixties. I'm like, I just read an entire wrong class lineup. So there's still some stressful moments on my end here. Um, it was opening night, but uh, I'm just soaking it up. Just, you know, remember the the, the smells. Rem remember the view. You know, remember what it's like to have this headset on and, and to talk to your audience down below you. Um, and, and remember, you know, what it's like to say, I am the announcer, not I was. I am one of the announcers at Knoxville Raceway. And it's it's great. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's going to be a fun time the rest of the year. Um, I just want to soak it all up. And as I mentioned, I'm kind of, um, journaling a little bit now, uh, you know, on race nights about, you know, how my weekend went and what I did. Um, I like to write a lot. Um, you know, I, I told my friends about that too. Like, Oh, you typing it up? I said, no, it's typing. Isn't, isn't you, your, your handwriting is you, like, you make it you. And so, um, you know, it, you know, so I'll have that for 
20, 30 years down the road, I'll look back on it one day and I'll read through it and go, oh, I remember that night. Yeah, so-and-so did this. That was a great night. And um, kind of my my own view there. Um, but yeah, just soak it up and um, enjoy every second of it. Hang out with Tony. Um, Tony and, and, and even Mike, though Mike's no longer on the track staff. Um, Mike and Tony have both become great friends of mine over the past uh, 10 years, um, as well as some of the drivers uh, as well, too. Jamie Ball has become a really good friend of mine in the past 10 years here, and um, we've really clicked pretty well here, and he's helped me out a lot on uh, my way, and I crash, his, I crash his race shop on weekends when I'm out there sometimes, so I'll, I'll go out there, and uh, it's, it's better than the tent I used to live in uh, during Nationals, I'll say that. That was back in the day when um, the broke college student was driving out on fumes and, and couldn't afford a place to stay, so he crashed a tent and got rained on some nights. And uh, so, yeah, just really enjoying it, soaking it up and just remembering and, and appreciating the, the feels, the smells of, of race night and, and being there. So uh, you're journaling, which could turn into a novel, which could turn into a, oh, maybe a no. motion picture and given oh. your football allegiance and now you actually have a long-term relationship, maybe you call it 50 shades of red. I mean, <laughs> right. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I will say too, you're mentioning uh, real fast. Uh, how do you explain the, the super nationals? The way I can explain it to you is um, it's an all you can eat buffet of racing. I mean, it's just yeah. everything you want for racing. Deep, there. deep fried shrimp to soft serve ice cream to get grits. But they don't, they don't have any of your favorite Iowa meals, the loose meat sandwich. Sorry. You know the Sorry. best part about the, the very best part about the loose meat sandwich would I, was that I got to go in Newton with Eric and Presley, and I got to meet Al Parker. Like that was my there you go. Yep. That was my quality. Oh, Price, he's tuned in. Hello, Whitey. Good to see you. Um, I did like the Jeep too that uh, Craig Ford rolled out with. Oh. Brand new. It must be hard not to say the Ford Raptor pace truck. Now you have to say I, I. We have a quarter jar upstairs. We started that back in. Uh, in 2015, when the pro sprints took over instead of 305s, every time you say 305 instead of pros, that's a quarter in it. And now we had the Pelham. It's it's not the Craig Ford Raptor. It's not even Craig Ford anymore. It's the Pelham Motors uh, Jeep. So I said Craig Ford Jeep a couple of times. I said the Pelham Motors Raptor a couple of times. I, I screwed it up already a couple of times on Saturday night, but we'll, we'll get it good to go for a week two here. There was a, a reference just made that by uh, Ramey for the steak sandwiches that Supernatural is my goodness they're good they're good best 10 yeah. bucks you'll ever spend chris um yeah. i had mike mayberry on the show last week um yeah. really really cool to uh to speak to some of the pro sprint guys and uh you know uh, scotty johnson whole, uh, old hotshot um he he has a, become an important friend i remember jack hewitt hanging out with uh with scotty i introduced him to jack a couple of years ago and because i wanted jack to give him that hewitt balance of life that he does um, okay. the, th the pro sprint community is very strong. The 360 uh, combination is very strong as well. And that's so important in the scheme of, you know, a lot of people talk about 410 racing and it's, it, it is the pinnacle. It is the F1 of, of dirt track racing with a wing, but those classes that you call in particular pro sprint and 360 have become your life with announcing at Knoxville. You must uh, look back on your time with those two classes in particular. Yeah, absolutely. The the the, uh, the pro sprint guys, you know, they're they're full time guys. They're the the, the guys that are out there uh, working full time jobs, and they get the race track on time. Great, and then we can get going. But they have a full time job outside of that. We have a few, maybe have a handful of three sixty guys that are full time drivers. Maybe one or two of them. Um, a Carl being one of them. Um, I think Matt Jewell. You count him as a a business owner that runs full time with uh, Octane Inc. There, but um, yeah, the the pro sprint guys they're racing for seven hundred bucks. Um, and they're just blue collar guys. Mike Mayberry, awesome dude. Um, you know, our defending points champion in that class. Um, and then uh, Stelzer uh, out in Omaha, him and his, his dad have been doing that for so many years. And, um, you know, he's, he's from the Omaha area and we have Eagle Raceway here in Lincoln, just down the road. They run the race sabers. And I've had we've had mutual friends of ours ask Matt, like, I just don't get it why he runs at Knoxville. We have, you know, Eagle right here. It's like it's Knoxville, man. That's why it's Knoxville. Um, you want to win there. I don't care if you're running a marathon on foot. If you win at Knoxville, you it's, you're in the record books. It's amazing. And that's why he drives out there to do it. Um, so, you know, getting to know those guys, Jeff Wilkie um, and, and, you know, on the 360 side, John Anderson, whose son now, uh, Gray, is, is running the 360 class um, for a little while anyway. Um, getting those guys have been great. Uh, Ryan Navratil, uh, you mentioned Scotty Johnson as well. It was an amazing story you did on him. Yeah. Uh, was it just last year? I think actually you did that on him and, and how he got his, uh, his burn marks on his body and what happened there. 
Um, great kid, um, great behind the wheel as well. But uh, yeah, those guys have, have been great to, to cover these past nine years. And um, what about Eric? Been, uh, Eric's a great story too, right? And he's not racing this year. Eric, oh yes, he he did step down. Um, he told me that uh, before the banquet last year. Yeah, and I was like, hey man, I got one more year too. Why don't you go out with me and be, be done with it? He's like, no, nah, we we're, we're gonna go now. We're we're ready he's to be a cool done. Cat. Great. Well, he was great. Yeah. Um, he was fantastic. And, um, he still tunes in once in a while. He'll be there once in a while. It's not every single weekend. And, um, but, uh, yeah, he was uh, tough to beat the past couple of years. He tried one year in 360. It didn't go quite the way he's hoping it was, but, uh, move back to uh, the pro sprints and, and, uh, finish things out there pretty strong. Chris, um, the last, uh, six weeks, seven weeks now, we've been, um, getting together as a committee, Tony Bockhoven, Judd Nelson, Jason Reed, Jim Udemark, Tony Bockhoven, uh, Jamie Ball and myself, to talk about uh, the Knoxville Nationals experience and to build up the fan engagement and to make sure we really coordinate a lot of cool things that makes the Nationals what it is. Because I think the racing is almost secondary to the yeah. experience that fans enjoy. And it, and it really has amazed me how much energy goes into little things to make them bigger. The, the junior fan club concept, the junior supporters thing that Jamie Ball kind of coordinates with Chase Randall and a a yeah. bunch of those guys like Jersey freezer are involved and Casey's, you know, donate pizza and Jersey freeze, get ice cream involved. And there's so much of that stuff that a, a racetrack of Knoxville size could easily go, ah, just open the doors. People are going to come. Yeah. They'll come. come. Yeah. But the reality is very different that the nucleus of USS Knoxville, because to me, it's like a big aircraft carrier it, is everybody is pulling to make that raceway always the best possible fan experience. Yeah. And, and and that's one thing that you learn uh, quickly, too, is you never take the fan for granted. Never. Um, that's something that, um, you know, living in Nebraska uh, for other aspects of sports that the, the, the university is learning here pretty quickly um, that you don't take fans for granted because they, they if you if you just think and assume they're going to show up and, you know, put the lights on, put on a football game, put on a race, they're going to that's not the case. That's not what's going to happen. You have to appreciate, you know, their money, what they're doing, um, and, and really, what are new ways to entertain them? How do you get them more involved? And, that, and that's one of the things that our sport, racing in general, um, is known to do. We we are a fan center. How get the fans involved? You know, there's no other sport um, in in the world where a fan could sit in the grandstands and listen to the officials uh, talk over the radio. You know, on 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 a race seeker. Um, you can't sit there at a football game and, and listen to the officials or the, or the coaches talk about the plays going in. You can't do that. In racing, you can do that. You have a race receiver or one way, you can tune in what's going on. Um, and, you know, on a, on a bigger level, NASCAR, you can listen to two ways as well, too. Um, but on the dirt side of things, you know, I, I've always kind of talked about when I go and talk to promoters across the country at, at events, um, that every promoter should go to a, a AAA or a minor league baseball game. And, and don't go to the game to watch, but go and look what they're doing. Um, when you go to the Omaha Storm Chasers, they're the uh, AAA affiliate of Omaha, of the uh, Kansas City Royals here in Omaha. Um, you, when you go there, you have a baseball game going on. That's from that's for dad, the hardcore baseball fan. The kids can go play putt-putt golf, 18 holes. They can go down the water slide. They can go play basketball. They can go in the jump house. They can go in the park. They can go in the basketball court. All other stuff. So what are you doing to have that family centric stuff going on? And so um, I, I know Jamie mentioned he has some great ideas coming up here. And um, there's always new ways to get the fans involved in nationals. Um, and I'm really excited to see what the community can put together moving forward there. Because it's going to be an incredible experience, I'm sure. But I just really appreciate that Knoxville understands. Like, you know, don't just turn the lights on and go. Because fans want to be entertained. They want, they want to come there yeah. and have a good time. And they want to be able to say, damn, that was awesome. I'm coming back next year because – Watching on Dirt Vision isn't going to give me that experience at home. It ain't going to happen. I got to be here for this. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see what they have coming up here. Before I came to Nebraska, uh, I always thought Omaha was a football play. You know, <laughs> see, thanks to Hollywood. Omaha. Uh, but Omaha. also, my favorite experience when I go to Nebraska, without a doubt, is going to the incredible Museum of Speed, uh, oh. Speedway Motors. And I'm very fortunate that each time I go there that Greg Nickel takes uh, – me through and I just it just blows my mind what a phenomenal I don't know how many people have not been there and I don't know why but anytime you go anywhere near Speedway Motors in Lincoln you need to go to the American Museum of Speed because my god that is just breathtaking yes. and they I'm not mistaken when they're adding on to it um, they have storage units upon storage units of stuff and yeah. they just don't have a place to display it and so you know what, what Speedy Bill did for the racing community in general is 
phenomenal. It's, it's, it's great. And um, yeah, I mean, for the, the hardcore um, racing fan or, or gearhead, um, that could take you almost a full day to go through. If you take, if you take your time and, and read what they got, and read the different inclinations. Um, for a guy like me, I can get through it in probably three or four hours, you know, kind of look at what I want to see and everything. But yeah, I mean, you got everything from uh, one of uh, Tony Stewart's cars. I'm not, if I'm mistaken, I think dude's car, the 20 Home Depot car is in there uh, when he won the Nationals in 03 um, with the driving suit. Um, and then you go the other side, you have like the real life-size Red Bear and Hot Wheels car, the paddy wagon. Um, yeah. You have those in there. Um, then you go upstairs, you have the miniatures. You have the the, the soapbox derby cars. I mean, it's everything. It's incredible. So um, how I know you did a speed stories back in 2021 or 19, 19 um, on the, on the trip you came to Nebraska. Um, it was about a good hour long, but there had to be a couple hours of footage you didn't use. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My, my favorite is the silver crown stuff that's in there. Oh, There's yeah. just some, some gorgeous silver crown stuff. Uh, but so if you ever get a chance, you, you just, if you ever pass it through Nebraska, my goodness, you, you really must uh, do that. Chris, what are you going to do? Um, you know, you got plans beyond Knoxville then if you, you know, you're going to finish up this year, it's going to be your 10th and final year. What are you going to do? Um, I got some plans in the works here. I, I've recently started um, a kind of a hobby that I want to expand into a more serious, you know, never going to be a full-time job, um, just but a hobby thing that I'm working on that will still include Knoxville and some racing stuff in general. Yep. Um, but um, laser engraving has become a big thing of mine here recently. Uh, I've got some amazing things in mind for you and Moonshine, um, things that you know, I I want to talk to, I've, I've kind of given hints to Deb uh, about things I want to partner on, um, because for me, you know, you go to a racetrack, you got your shirts, you got your hats, cool. I, I'm, I'm kind of over that stuff. I got a thousand hats. I want something unique. What is different that I can't get anywhere else? And so I've got some mock-ups of things that I'm learning how to do now. Um, really excited about uh, the future of that and, and how I can do that. Um, and uh, maybe in a year or so, I'll be good enough to where I can talk to Deb and we can get some some cool stuff in her in her booth that uh, I can have there for her and see what she wants to do with it. But um, yeah, laser graves are one thing, but also just um, travel for racing as well. Um, you'll still see me at Knoxville Raceway uh, on um, uh, on select Saturdays and uh, hanging out as a fan. I'll come up and uh, bug Tony once in a while and uh, might fill in for him once in a while as well if he's got any uh, TV gigs going on. You'll still see me there for nationals with my race pass. Uh, we'll be there um, every year uh, with with. Uh, uh, the track using my race pass now. Um, really trying to push that fantasy racing aspect. I think there's a lot of cool things that, that the fans can do there. And you can be the, the Knoxville Raceway fantasy champion. And then you can be the Knoxville Raceway Nationals fantasy champion as well, too. So some really cool things there. But um, I, I told my boss, Josh Holt, uh, my race pass, so the first thing I want to do next year, um, I, I'd like to go to uh, the Prairie Dirt Classic uh, out at Falls, Fairbury. I'd like to go to that one. Uh, I want to go to the Dream uh, as well, too, and the King's Royal. Uh, haven't been to either one of those tracks or any of those events. Uh, so those are my list for sure. Um, but also too, I, I on, on opening night next year, uh, I'll probably just sit at home, turn on the dirt vision and um, engrave some wood and listen, tune in and just kind of relax for a while. Um, it's, I, I, I love, I love calling the races. It's been great. Um, but uh, it's, I just know it was the right time this year to, to go ahead and make it in 10 years. Nothing like watching the nationals with a little bit of wood. I completely. No, there we go, right. Right. <laughs> You know, uh, every year you and I catch up usually for uh, a cheeseburger chowder, I think is what you have at Coffee Connection and uh, oh, right? and, a, and a coffee there. Now, normally you're all up and about. You're like out of the car. You're like, woohoo, here I am. Let's go to Coffee Connection. Well, last year, and she's going to, she, my mom's actually here uh, in the in living the room watching. She get, she's going to, yeah, yeah, she's going to hit me here. Get, 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 come on, bring her out. Come on. Is Mama uh, Krug here? Yeah, she is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is a world exclusive. Oh no! Oh wow! Oh my You're god! I am drunk with the responsibility yeah. here. Of yeah. this could go anywhere. Wow! So um, now I got to stop cussing. I got to talk. We're doing some. It. We're doing some yard work in the house, but um, here she is. This is Wade. Hi, uh, Mama. Last year, Hi. La last year, um, you saw me pull up in her van. So she's wearing a shirt. She's wearing as a, I, as a right now. That's as I call it, the the Jesus mobile. She pulled up. So. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, she's here. See, she's um, got yeah. the face shirt on. I see that. <laughs> yeah, face shirt. Of course. You must yeah. be um you must be very proud of this lunatic that we all love so much. He's a very special boy, your boy. We've always thought he's special and <laughs> in many ways. <laughs> all right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go. Time to go.
<laughs> Good to see you, Mama. You too. <laughs> uh, so you uh, were, I remember. So to put you in the picture, Chris had to borrow his mum's car to come to, to the national. She's gone back out. Oh, are you did you just what do you got there? What are you I was gonna show you some memorabilia before we're done here. We go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So anyway, your mom, your mom is particularly passionate about her faith. And uh it, it it looked like her car had been attacked by a bunch of Sunday school kids. Uh, it just wrote every kind of testament and every inspirational uh, Bible thing. And you you slunk out of that car like a celebrity pulling oh, up outside. A I've, I go to church on Sundays. You know, I I, I consider myself a man of faith uh, myself. But I I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I love you, but even God's like, calm down, lady, get the sticker off the car. <laughs> so. What do you got? Show me your memorabilia. What are you talking about here? Yeah, so this is what I was going to show you. Things like this. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces here. Um, got this the Chili Bowl a couple of years ago. Justin Grant, as you know, he oh, yeah. smashed the can. And when he won it in 2019, um, I, Tim, his uh, dad, blames me now. Tim Grant blames me. I haven't signed the can. That's the actual can picture his dad took of that. And it's signed by Justin here as well. One of my favorite ones. I was offered actually about two grand for that can on site. I said, no, thanks. I'm I'm good. And um, so what happened was Justin won the feature in the Chili Bowl on a prelim night on Friday. Um, I'm downstairs in the infield. He takes a can, throws it, and his dad saw it and threw it away. I'm like, I'm gonna grab that can. Let's do something different. He grabbed a can, had had him sign it, and it was a big thing. And now the year a year later in 2020, Tim sees me. He's like, dude, you started something because they're fighting for that can everywhere they go now. Like, I don't know what. I'd never seen it before until you did it. And you posted it on Facebook. It was a big deal. It was cool. But now they're like, they're fighting over that thing to get an autograph. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. <laughs> it's such a trendsetter, mate. No doubt about that. Proud of me. Proud of me. Chris, yeah. um, you're a good man, mate. All BS aside, you, you've got a you've got a beautiful heart and you're a very, very genuine man. And, and I'm extremely proud to call call you a friend. We all laugh at some of the Krugisms. You've got a very unique way of uh, seeing the world. And uh, Lord knows we've all been through those heartbreak times with you where you're uh, oh god she's a heart so i'm really we all we're all praying that this is the one because we all got to talk you down off the top of the building uh but it's really cool to catch up with you congratulations on 10 years at the knoxville race well i know that everyone loves you mate you're a very much loved figure in the in the game and i know that tony rides you like a kentucky derby favorite but uh yeah you're you're his boy and uh i I know that uh, he's very proud as well so I can't wait to catch up with you in July and we can talk about football. And incidentally, how good are those uh, looking shoes yeah. there? Well, and- we got, we got Husker, we got Husker power here. We're, we're good guys. We're, we're good. So, but no, anyway. it's, it's going to be a fun, fun time, mate. Uh, we'll see you uh, this uh, late, late uh, summertime. And um, we'll see you quite a bit, you know, with uh, Boone again up there as well. And um, are, are we doing a bottle again this year? Yeah, of course we are. Of course we are. Now, um, so as much as Tony hates Vegemite, what is my non-favorite breakfast passion that you always try to make me eat? Oh man, the biscuits and gravy, baby. That's that's what we're doing. You, we <laughs> used so to, remember we used to go across the road to High V when it was open twenty four hours, and we would have well, like- but Brent, Brendan Scorgy, Adam Ray, all oh, those God. guys. After uh, after I picked them up from Dingus and the bars closed, I, I'd go ahead and we'd swing by, get some breakfast, and um, I, I'd scarf down some biscuits and gravy, and we good to go on that. And um, I, I know that uh, I only have met an Aussie yet. Well, of course, at first thought they were confused by it because they thought biscuits yeah. and gravy, cookies and brown gravy. What are we doing here? Uh, yeah. like, no, 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 no. This is this is scone and gravy here, and uh, they didn't care for it either when I saw it. But Mrs. D's and High V has some. Pretty good gravy. That's good stuff. Bloody Mary's and breakfast pizza at the A&P will be my choice. Uh, good to see you, mate, as always. Uh, check out my race pass as well. Looking forward to hearing uh, you and Tony and, of course, the the new Blake 2.0 uh, as well at the raceway. And I look forward to catching up with you soon. Good luck this weekend at the races. And it's always good to see you, mate. You too, man. We'll see you. Take care. And just before I go, just as I go to press end meeting for all, go Hawks! Goodbye.